How's it going? Yomatosh here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install Guacamole. First off, Guacamole is a remote desktop client that you can use in your browser and you can use it to connect to multiple uh, VNC RDP remote machines and it all conglomerates them into this single web interface where you can basically see everything and then remote into any desktop. I'll demonstrate it right here. I'll log into my instance of Guacamole and right here you can see the three instances and you can literally just jump right into any vnc or rdp client i believe there's also like tcp if you're interested in that so like just ssh and uh, i'll show you how to do it in docker i currently use uh, proxmox and i've set up a test bench uh, if you want to see more videos on proxmox do make sure to leave a comment so the first thing you're going to want to do is install docker and if you don't know what docker is i highly suggest that you go look that up docker is an application containerization platform and to install docker i'm currently Currently using uh, an Ubuntu uh, container LXC on Proxmox. So to install Docker on Ubuntu, you can actually just go to the Docker page and follow the installation instructions. And I'll go ahead and do this. I am currently on a root-based LXC container, so I won't need to use sudo. But if you are using some other sort of like Debian-based uh, a system you might need to use sudo to run these commands, which is super user privileges, super user do. So it's pretty straightforward just following these commands, uh, you don't really have to think too much about it. We'll also be installing Docker Compose, and Docker Compose is a really neat way to uh, structure your oh, missed that. Docker Compose is a really neat way to structure your Docker applications. So to make this simple, I'll be installing Docker Compose from the uh, apt repository and uh, it's generally not recommended again because it's not really updated in the apt repository as far as I know. So if you do have the opportunity, you can also go on this Docker site and go get the instructions to actually install the latest version of Docker Compose. But with that said, I'm going to make a directory for guacamole and I'm just going to call it guacamole and I'll cd into that directory. So cd guacamole. And here I'm going to touch and create a docker compose file. So docker compose.yaml. That's docker hyphen compose.yml. And you can use your editor of choice. I believe I have nvim. No, I do not have nvim. Or you can use a nano if you prefer that. And I probably will use nano right now, but I'll go ahead and install nvim. So uh, nano would be nano and then docker compose yml. So this is basically a text editor where you can uh, add or remove text from. And I currently have the uh, guacamole install instructions right here, or rather the docker compose file contents right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste this into here. And basically what it does is the version is a version of docker compose. Uh, some versions of docker compose don't have some options, so it's quite important to check this sometimes. Uh, services are the services we're going to deploy and the first service and the only service in this case is guacamole and that's from Max Waldorf so the initial image was actually by someone named Osno on github but he no longer maintains uh, the guacamole image so Max Waldorf took that forked that and basically modified it to work with newer versions of guacamole and the container name which is just the name you can give the container guacamole the volume, so the volumes are basically where you want the actual config file to be on the whole system and where you want it to be on the actual Docker container. So Docker container is sort of like a virtual machine of some sort, more like a container though. And you can map the files in the Docker to the files on the actual host operating system running Docker. So in this case, oops, in this case, I'm actually just going to make it uh, uh, slash root because I'm using a root account and I'm going to do slash guacamole and slash config and that maps directly to the config directory inside guacamole and it's going to be hosted on port 8080 both inside the container and outside the container and you can also add a time based two-factor authentication forgot that for a second uh, so you can also add time based two-factor authentication if you want to keep it secure if you have it accessible if you want to have it accessible on the internet, it's pretty important to have that. You don't want your password being broken uh, or being brute forced. So yeah, I will leave that out for now though because this is just going to be in my internal network. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. So that's Control X and then you hit Y and then you hit uh, Enter to save it as the same name as before. 
to have a little check and that's the docker compose file inside this directory. So what you want to do now is do a docker hyphen compose op hyphen d. If you're not using a root account you might want to uh, prefix sudo in front of this as well. Well like I said before I'm using an LXC that has its own root access so I will be leaving out sudo. You might also need a sudo for docker so if you were doing a docker ps so after you see your running containers you might have to do a sudo docker ps. Oh I do have sudo installed interestingly so I can actually just do sudo docker so it's probably easier for you guys to follow me this way sudo docker compose op hyphen d so op will start up the container and d would daemonize it so that it doesn't just like spam your screen with like logs and things of that sort and it doesn't open the shell for you as well the shell for the container so first thing it does it pulls the image into your host system so it can actually deploy it and this would only take like a few moments So I'll do an IPA to actually check the IP address of this container and in my local network it is 10.0.1.90 So if we do a sudo docker ps we can actually check if the container is running and it does say created 15 seconds ago and up for 14 seconds It's currently broadcasting on port 8080 of all the interfaces connected to this container So I can go ahead and go to the IP address of this container and hit port 8080 and there we go that's uh, Apache and I believe the password is oops I have to go check this so yes the uh, default password and username is guac admin so you can just use that to log in and this is a new instance of guac admin so if you go over here this is sort of like your home screen if you go over here to settings not now you can actually then configure the connections that you want so I'll do a very quick one I'll do a connection to my other PC, into Zorin OS desktop, and the protocol will be VNC. Yeah, you need not need to worry about most of these things, but if you want to set a max number of connections, say per user, you can go ahead and do that there. Yes, so parameters on the network and not Guacamole proxy. So yes, that's the host name of the device and that's the port. And for authentication, this need not be worried about at the moment unless you have a, a pass username and password for your VNC client. You can go ahead and actually set up the clipboard as well. And you can, if you do need to screen record, you can actually set up a path in your container, which you can also map to your host where screen recordings will go to. This could be if you need like to monitor all the access and what people are doing on your remote desktop clients. You can also enable audio using Pulse Audio. It's very well documented in the uh, Wacomoli documentation. And you can send up, you can send a wake on LAN as well if your computer is actually off to turn it on using Wacomoli, which is really neat. So there we go. I've set up a basic Zorin desktop. And I'll go ahead and hit connect, and there we go. That's uh, my Zorin desktop right inside my browser. So I put in my password, and there we go. That's my desktop. I can go ahead and do pretty much anything I do if I was right in front of the computer as well, which is really nice. Latency for animations you do get a bit it does get a bit choppy, but once you have things up and running, it does work pretty flawlessly. So I'll just do a quick uh, apt install new fetch. And I'll run into new fetch over here. So that's uh, Zorin OS. I've been using it for a little bit and I quite like it. I use it for development purposes and remoting into my uni because I don't want to have to use a VPN on my actual system. So I use a VM, which I then use my VPN on, which is pretty nice. But yeah, this is sort of the things I get really interested in. If you'd like to see similar content or, or perhaps want me to go into more details about how some of these things work, be sure to leave a comment. And that's been me, Yom Toshe, signing up. Peace.